Harbor Freight sometimes releases more than one version of a tool, and they can be really different. And these new Bauer polishers are no exception. So I went ahead and bought both of the Bauer polishers. I paid $60 for each of these, and in this video we're going to tear them apart, see how they compare, and compare them to the older polisher Harbor Freight used to sell. And spoiler alert, one of these two is significantly better. To try to minimize confusion here, in all the shots I'm going to keep the 64528 on the left, this is the one I already tore apart, and the 64529 on the right. So right off the bat here, I see some significant similarities between the old one and the 64529. And it becomes really clear when you look at the gear cases here and how they are cast and shaped. The color difference is because uh, the 64529 was painted after it was cast. There are some differences here on the bodies. The old one is just solid plastic, or I should say nylon with 30% glass fibers. The newer ones have both been uh, upgraded with a rubberized over molding here. This is kind of a personal preference. Some people like it because it adds extra grip. Some people don't like it because they can be damaged, especially by uh, oil-based products and get you know beat up and sticky over time. There are some significant differences on the cords here. The uh, 64528 has the best of all. It uses an SJ cord, so thermoset rubber, a good, a tough material, something we see on better quality tools, and there's a lot of it. 10 feet of cord, which is good with a polisher, you're always throwing the cord over your shoulder, so a longer cord is better. The old one uses an SJT cord. Where is that marking? There you can see it. So this is a thermoplastic, probably something like PVC, just not as good of a material, and there's not as much of it. There's about six and a half feet. So step up to the new 64529, and we have a 10 foot cord, which is good to see but just like the old one, it's only SJT, so not as nice of a material. I'm gonna crack these open now, but before I do, again, we see a lot of similarities in design between the old one and the 64529. And before I tear into these, let me just say there's a recent video you might wanna check out where I tore apart the old one and the 64528 to compare. I don't wanna spoil it, but let's just say this was not really an upgrade. All three of these come apart the same way. There's a single screw you remove on the back and remove a rear cover. Then you can pop out the brushes, remove the screws in the front, and pull off the gear case. All right, I got them apart here, so let's start taking a look at the innards. Let me just say, to keep this video from getting super long, I'm not going to look at every single part. What I'm going to do is really focus on the differences here. If you want to take a closer look at a lot of the parts, check out the video I did previously where I compared these two. Right off the bat here, we see some differences. The old one and the 64529, if you look inside the speed adjustment, you can see it's all black in there. That's because they have coated the internals with epoxy. That helps keep out moisture or contamination that can damage the electronics, and it helps reinforce everything, so it's less likely to be damaged by vibration. Compare that to the 64528, and you can see it's not black down in there because they skipped that step. On all three of these polishers, they use a no-name Chinese switch. We can see here on the 528 that they have a boot on the actual switch to help keep contamination out of there. That is nice to see. On the 529, at first it looks like they skipped that because there's no boot, but look here, there's this kind of rubbery seal which is doing the same thing, helping keep contamination from uh, getting down there inside the switch. The brushes and the brush holders on all of these are very similar. They all use stamped brass brush holders. The brushes are very similar sizes, shapes, and hardness. The only difference here is if you look on the 528, they added this uh, exterior sheathing here on the lead from the brush to the brush holder. The bodies of these all use the same material, PA6 GF30, so nylon with 30% glass fibers. That's a good quality material, and they used plenty of it in all three of these. Uh, they feel nice and sturdy. They did address one of my complaints here on the update from the old one to the 529. Check out all that flashing there. The injection molding on this old one just isn't done very nicely. It's much cleaner and better here on the Bauer. 
On the field windings here, none of them are epoxy coated. Epoxy coating on these for reinforcement is something we see on more expensive tools. There is a difference here on the 528, which I pointed out in the last video. There are some wires in here that just are not very well secured. Check out this wire here. There's nothing really securing it. It's just kind of flapping in the breeze. So vibration from the tool here could cause that to break and cause a failure. Checking out the rotors here, or armatures, and the old one and the 529 have a nice detail here. Epoxy reinforcement where the windings connect to the commutator. This is another place where vibration can cause a failure, so this epoxy just helps reinforce that connection. And on the 528, we can see they skipped that. Other than that, as far as design goes, the armatures are all pretty similar. They all have cleanly cut and stacked laminations. The windings have been dipped in resin for some reinforcement, and they all have balancing marks. One thing that's kind of weird is that these two have non-directional fans. Polishers like this only spin one direction, so it would make more sense to have a directional fan like the 528, which can more efficiently move air. It's time to get into the gear cases here, uh, but in this video I'm not going to show you how to open the gear case because I already did that and if you want to know how, uh, check out that last video I produced on these polishers. Looking at the greases here, and the old one uh, does not have the original grease anymore, I replaced it with this uh, fully synthetic wheel bearing grease, but originally this one had something like this, the 529, which uses kind of a cheap axle grease type material, so it's not the best, uh, but there is plenty of it in there at least. On the 528, they did step up to a better material. This is either uh, something that's maybe lithium based or a fully synthetic material. It looks very similar to like Super Lube brand synthetic grease. So they stepped up to something nicer here. Also on the 528, they stepped up to a needle bearing to support the shaft that goes through the main gear. We've seen on higher quality tools in the past that they generally use a needle bearing here. Uh, the two other ones don't have that. They just have a bushing that supports that shaft. I have had some people in the past argue that bushings are just fine for a tool like this and you don't need a needle bearing. But like I said, we've seen nicer tools use needle bearings in the past. I've seen some people say that from the old one to the 529 was just a slight cosmetic update, but that is not correct. If you look closely at the gears here, you can see the teeth are slightly different because they changed the gear ratio. And I'll talk about that a little bit more later. There is a similarity between all three of these, and that is the clean, consistent machine work on the crown gears. All three of these are nicely done and much better than we've seen on some cheap tools in the past. Okay, bear with me here. I'm going to get a little bit in the weeds on bearings and gear ratios, but I think it shows some really interesting differences between all three of these. So here on the updated version of this old one, the 64529, they changed the gear ratio, and I think that's related to some differences here in the bearings we'll see. Compared to the old one here, this updated version, the 64529, has a different gear ratio. The old one is about 3.5 to 1, and the new one is around 4.25 to 1. The higher gear ratio on this one gives it a more output torque, but it also makes the motor spin at a higher speed. On the 64528, they used a numerically even higher gear ratio at about 5.6 to 1. And I think that's why they had to use shielded bearings here. Shielded bearings like this typically have a higher maximum speed than sealed bearings, which the other two use, but they don't keep out debris as well. So this is an entry point right here for grit to get in the bearing. Also, the 64528 uses all no-name bearings. So the higher motor speed here on the 64528 explains why it was louder and vibrated more in my last video. There are definite trade-offs for that higher speed. And that extra vibration makes it even more likely that the connection here between the commutator and the windings could break, or that loose wire in the field winding could break and cause a failure. So let's look at the other two here, and both of these use sealed bearings, so these will be better at keeping out debris that could get into the bearing and wear it out. The old version here uses a CHL brand bearing. That's a decently reputable Chinese company. The new one is CN Ball, which is another okay company, but it's not a name brand. Also on the updated 64529 here, you can see they went with a smaller bearing and added this vibration dampener on top of it. 
And I think I know why they did this, and it's related to the gear ratio. The bigger bearing on the old one has a lower top speed. The smaller one here has a higher top speed. So when they changed the gear ratio here on the 64529 to improve the output torque, they also went and changed the bearing to one that could better handle the higher motor speed. That's some good attention to detail, and I like to see that. So it turned out there are some real differences between all three of the polishers we looked at today. They've definitely made some changes to the design over the years. And there were some significant differences between these two Bauer polishers. Both of the Bauer polishers had some pluses and some minuses, but I would definitely pick this one, the 64529. So what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. And while you're down there, hit that like button and that subscribe button. And thanks for watching.